welcome to Marvel Vision, a podcast about Marvel, the MCU, and Loki. Oh, I'm oh, Alex. Yeah. I'm Pete. And we are going to be talking about episode five of season one of Loki, Journey into Mystery. So if you haven't watched that, it, what? That means something right there. It title. means, listen, we're going to get into this. I, I'm going to give the spoiler warning here because there are so many things going on in this episode. Yes. This had more Easter eggs than the Ooh. White House lawn the Sunday of Easter. That's what I'm talking about here. Oh, so we're going to get into all of that stuff. And I definitely want to talk about this episode because obviously this is a huge one. is the penultimate episode of the first season of Loki. But first, Pete, you weren't here last week. Yeah. And we got into one of your wheelhouses a little bit. There was a lot of controversy, a lot of debate about it online. But there was, and we even talked about it here on the podcast. Justin and I discussed it. But there seemed to be something going on with Sylvie and Loki. Yeah. And that builds about. more in this episode. Before we get into the specifics of what happened this week, how are you feeling about this as our rom com expert? First off, uh, love the uh, I love awkward uh, rom com moments, and this was just killing it on that. Uh, it's also a little weird if you stop and thinking about it because it's like, is Loki in love with himself? Mm -hmm. Like, is that? I mean, what is happening with that? But I think they're absolutely adorable together. Uh, some real uh, moments in this episode that I, you know, clutched my pearls. It was uh, it just really just um, it's very exciting. I love the turn that this show is taking. Um, and man, they just really keep you on your toes. So many crazy things all happening at once. Uh, this is just a lot of fun. I'm at first I was kind of like, what is the show? What is happening? There's so many things Kind of like uh, it's slow and fast and all over the place, but this like hits a rhythm that everything kind of comes together in all the right ways. I I'm having such a blast. Broad overview of this episode, even though again I'm sure you watched it, but in case people are listening to the podcast later, you know, centuries from now when they revisit <laughs> our Loki podcast, so sure, sure, Loki sure. has been pruned from the timeline. Except it turns out when you're pruned, you're not actually killed. You are sent to the void at the end Good of news. time, which is where things get destroyed and eaten. As quote unquote, the timekeepers figure out what's going to happen at the end of the time, and that always progress. Uh, Loki very quickly figures out, thanks to cl classic Loki, boastful Loki, kid Loki, and alligator Loki, and I really alligator appreciated... Loki! I appreciated them specifying that it was an alligator and not a crocodile, because I called him alligator Loki. My daughter corrected me and said, no, no, that's definitely a crocodile, but I was right, and I'm going to rub it in her face. You should, you should. Mm -hmm. That's how parenting works. That, they got to learn sometimes the difference between alligators and crocodiles. Yeah. So he encounters all of them. They've become pretty cool about living in this wasteland void and almost being eaten by a giant cloud named Alioth. Alioth, excuse me. Day, you know? Yes. You uh, but Sylvie... Comes to the rescue, Sylvie prunes herself after Ravona Renslayer, of all Oof. people, betrays her, jumps to the void, teams up with the Lokis, just realizes that she can enchant Eliath, and that's the plan that they come up with. So ultimately, classic Loki sacrifices himself in a really wonderful way. I love oh. that moment so much. Loki, our Loki, and Sylvie disperse Eliath and head towards something, presumably whoever is actually behind the TVA. Uh, also, thanks to Mobius, who is heading back to the TVA, oh, is alive it? himself and is going to burn the whole thing down. to the ground. Burn the whole thing to the ground. And meanwhile, Ravona is doing some research of her own to try to figure out what's going on at the TVA. Maybe she knows, maybe she doesn't, but she certainly said Miss Minutes on a task to find out what's actually going on. So lots of stuff uh, set up here, but I do want to jump off something that you just said, Pete. We've talked about this. We've mentioned this on the podcast a couple of times. But Michael Waldron was pretty upfront about the series and said, like Loki, I want to shake it up every episode. Every episode is going to kind of be its own thing while following the plot. And I think, first of all, they've been doing a great job of that, of making it episodic television, but also just driving down on the theme of lying and friendship and using these betrayal. two parts of things, betrayal, and all of these things that make Loki Loki, or Loki's Loki's, <laughs> and hitting them so hard at every episode. 
it's so smart. We'll see how it all ties up. And people put a lot of pressure on last episodes. But just based on these first five, this series has been great. I've loved it. I really think they've done a great job of building uh, mm-hmm. along the season. Like, um, what's also great is the Marvel shows are so different. Like, uh, you know, WandaVision was different from, uh, uh, you know, uh, Winter Soldier and Cap. And it's just like, this is its own thing. And so clever the way things are all coming together. I cannot wait to get into all the different fun things in this episode. But I, there were just so many times where I paused it just to soak it in because i was having so much fun not to rewatch something just to kind of enjoy the mm-hmm. moment of what's happening oh this was my favorite episode by far really I cannot wait uh for the for the last episode uh man this was so much fun why was this your favorite episode was it because of all the easter eggs was it because of the sylvie loki stuff what drew you to this one in particular because it you know, people talk about Loki being Loki. The moment where, like, we are, like, with a Loki alligator and there's old Loki or, or original Loki, and then different Lokis, and then he opens up the thing and an army of Lokis comes down and then it's just a domino effect of betrayal. Oh, my God. It was just so fun. And such a callback to, like, Thor kind of playing with Loki, being like, you're so predictable. And then this thing of, like... Hey, it's never too late to change that. Oh, and Wilson talks about, and then Loki like really does like, oh, I am so excited. And if he betrays Sylvie, um, I will lose my goddamn mind because it's so nice between them right now. And it's just, uh, it's so much fun. It is great, but I, one of my favorite exchanges in the episode, you have that whole beautiful, really nicely played scene between Sylvie and Loki when they're sitting outside the barber shop where the rest of the Lokis are hanging out with Mobius and they're talking and they're doing the whole thing with the cape and the cute little yeah. snuggle thing and everything. Yeah. But I don't remember the exact line. I should have written it down, but Sylvie asks Loki, will you betray betray? me? And he gives this look like, well, I'm Loki, you know? And then he gives that little speech about, I betrayed Thor, I betrayed my brother, my father, my mother, Asgard, absolutely everybody. He doesn't say, no, I'm not going to betray you because he knows it's in his essential nature to always be playing the long game, always be playing the con game. Um, The only one who seems to have broken that cycle in any way is classic Loki, the old Loki. But even he reached a point where he was like, no, I have to show everybody that I'm still alive, that I made it out. You know, I don't think he says that out loud. Exactly. Glorious purpose. Glorious purpose. But betrayal has to be part of that. It's, I I don't Don't, think, I was, well, I was thinking about this a little bit. Don't you ruin this for me. No, I was thinking about this during the episode that I think what they're playing here is really smart, that we're not, getting a heroic Loki here at the end of the series. He's still always going to be an anti-hero. He's still what? always going to be Loki. Do you want to see a Loki who is good and pure and happy with his friends and has learned all of his lessons and completed I don't know. It's a Loki we haven't seen sacrifices yet. So himself? Why, yeah, don't put Loki in a little box there. He could grow beyond his stature. It could be a whole new mm-hmm. Loki. He could be mischievous in different times but you know if he's true to sylvie like i don't know like why can't he uh you know uh, rise above what's happening and he does like he he sacrifices himself for the mission at the end mm-hmm. of this episode in such a glorious way and then gets one up by classic loki and it was it's awesome to see the thing that they are doing here to the point that you're making is they are growing Loki. They are allowing him to have a character arc, but there are things that essentially make Loki Loki. And I don't think we don't need him to turn into Captain America where he's doing the sacrifice play at every turn. You know, he's still, I guess what I'm saying, and this is getting into predictions for the last episode, but if we get a resolution where Loki, you know, throws himself into a portal and saves the day, that's not Loki. It needs to be a twist in some way, a twist of the knife where he is betraying somebody, where no. he is doing that, no. but he's doing it for the greater not good. Pay attention. Yeah, he's he is a different Loki. He's the one Loki that can save the day and can do this. And I think, you know, 
I don't know who's going to betray who at the end, and I don't want to think about it because I'm enjoying where we are. The fact that right now Loki is trying to grow and be better is awesome. Well, I'll and throw this out at you, though. I don't care if it fights his nature or whatever bullshit you want to put on him. This is a different Loki, and he has maybe love or something, and I think it it could be enough to change him. His speech, where even though all of his Lokis laugh at him, was awesome and very moving. I agree with you, but a bigger question I have off of this episode they really drive home that maybe he is not the special Loki. Sylvie is the special Loki. She's the different one. She's the powerful one who can do the things the rest of them can't. So I think if anything, maybe this is what I want to see versus what I, I think will actually happen or know will actually happen. But I think Sylvie is the one who needs to grow and change. She needs to trust people. She needs to become the better Loki quote, our Loki or whatever you want to call it. Avengers Endgame Loki maybe he doesn't have to change. You know, maybe he only needs to change a little bit. He needs to change 10%, while Sylvia is the one that needs to change 80%, 90%. Yeah, but Sylvia is doing great. Like she She's is, doing great. She's unbelievable, and she's solving this whole fucking TVA thing. Like, Have you seen her Instagram? She is living. Hashtag <laughs> living right now. You know, she posted a photo from The Void. She looked killer from oh, there. But, hey, don't, you know, she can look however she wants. I... I think uh, it's it's awesome what's happening, and I would have never known how much I wanted this show until it, it kind of it is. And I it was just it, this is so much fun. I mean, such a great. There's been so many amazing comics about Loki, and so many great kind of like character arcs for different characters in this uh, kind of universe. And I would have never known how much fun this Loki uh, story has been. And I'm I'm just it's, it's such a cool reward for all the fans and all the Marvel heads. And the great. other thing that I think is working really nicely about this, and I believe we've mentioned this on the podcast before, but we don't know where this is going. And what I mean is in terms of the MCU, we don't know where this is going yeah. because this is relatively uncharted territory. We don't know what is next for this Loki, where he is headed to versus WandaVision, which I loved. You know, we know Wanda is going into Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. So you have these connection points there. Uh, Captain America and the Winter Soldier we kind of knew, okay, he's going to head into the new cap, so that's going to yeah. feed into whatever Avengers thing is happening. But everything with the TVA, certainly there's a lot of speculation about it heading towards Kang and time and time fracturing and all these things we're talking about. It could head towards that. It could head directly into Multiverse of Madness and No Way Home. Or, and Or it... Could it ha- could hang at, and I think this was super clear in the episode, mm-hmm. so correct me if you feel this. It's yeah. clearly going into a Throg series right oh after God. this. and it would be I would die. Just, oh I would my literally <laughs> my, die of happiness. My brain would explode, oh and I would gosh. just be like, we did it! And just kill is that <laughs> Is that a segue to talk through the insane amount of Easter eggs of this episode? Which, yeah. uh, you mentioned this at the beginning, but even when I saw Journey into Mystery, and I saw the little description on Disney+, Plus where... It's Loki meets a bunch of variants of Loki. I was like, oh my God, my fingers are going to fall off. There's <laughs> no way that I'm going to be able to write all this stuff down. But I tried. I'm sure there's something we missed, but I'm going to throw stuff out there. Starting with, we were talking about this before we got on. The title of the episode, Journey into Mystery, comes straight from the comic books, uh, comes straight from the introduction of Thor and Loki. They were initially introduced in Journey into Mystery. Later on, I believe it was a Kieran Gillen run called Journey into Mystery that focused really heavily on Kid Loki versus I Call, who was the classic Loki come back, and that was the villain there. So pretty clear shout out there. Uh, The other big one, Eliath, was a character created by Mark Grunwald, who we've talked about a lot here on the podcast. He was... Uh, The inspiration, not the inspiration, the creator of the TVA, also a person in the TVA, uh, and Mike Gustavich, they created them for Avengers, the Terminatrix objective, number one. And probably the important thing here, I kind of want to hold off on Kang stuff and talk about that at the end, sort of. Let's hold off on speculation about who is the big bad of the series, because that's the big question at the end. But... (laughs) Eliath was a big cloud that looks pretty much like he does on the show that went up directly against Kang, was summoned by Ravona Renslayer. So there's all of these connections going on there. 
Uh, the next one, which I'm sure everybody noticed, but is a ludicrous shout out, is the Thanos copter, the Thanos yeah, helicopter. Yeah, the Thanos copter. That was wild. That yeah. was the one that the shout out to me that I was like, okay, we're going for it this episode. Oh, yeah, we are. Uh, but that's from Spidey Super Stories number 39 from March number 19, uh, 1979. Number 1979. I always call years by their number. Sure, sure. Smart, yeah. smart. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, but that's a real thing. It was Thanos in a helicopter fighting Hellcat of all characters. And it later showed up, I believe, in a Deadpool issue. But that was, you know, obviously making fun of it. But I think like sure. Thanos picked up dead through there then as you mentioned we got to see frog thor aka throg when they zoom through the ground going to the loki's oh, hideout yeah. it we also even... saw mjolnir we saw the mm -hmm. hammer there just laying there. it's just so crazy to see in this series like all these powerful weapons doing nothing having no power and no, yeah it's very cool yeah just, uh so for those running. who don't know though a throg a.k.a. Frog Thor. Um, there's been a bunch of different identities, but it was Simon Walterson, who was a guy, I believe, I might have this wrong, but a guy changed into a frog. So he actually was not a frog, but he picked up a sliver of Mjolnir. And he was actually introduced to very briefly in Thor 364, but on the jar with Frog Thor, it says T365, because that was the big issue where they really, Thor 365, where they brought him in. Um the next one, which is such a deep dive, but in Kid Loki's hideout, there were a bunch of different little oh, Easter eggy yeah. things. There was Poly Bias, which is a video game that never existed. It's an urban legend, and it was supposed to be part of a psyops thing that the government was running Whoa. that got passed around, I believe, in the 80s, but of course never existed. So that was a thing that clearly got wiped from the timeline by the TVA. Also, Kid Loki was drinking High C Ecto Cooler. Yeah, the he was. Great, great Easter egg. Released yeah, with Ghostbusters, came out. Legendary, yeah. doesn't exist anymore. Probably coming out again for the new Ghostbusters movie, I'd assume. Uh, we also saw Vote Loki. The, that was a big yeah. character, got his hand bit off, but he was created by Christopher Hastings for a miniseries from 2016, the tied into the election. So that was super Chris fun. Hastings shout out. That's awesome. Yeah, that's great. Uh, we've had that guy on our live show a bunch Bunch. of times. He's a great guy, great very writer. Funny. Very fun to see that live on the yeah. show. Now, this one... I'm just going to throw this out there, but I don't know if this is anything or me just like on a high alert for Easter eggs. But did you feel like Owen Wilson driving a pizza car <laughs> was a reference to the Pizza Planet truck from Pixar because he played Lightning McQueen from Cars? Wow, that is a stretch, dude. Probably. Yeah, I mean, I just think it's hysterical that like you're coming to the rescue in this giant uh, like pizza cutout cardboard mm -hmm. on top of a car. I mean, that's just funny. But um, I will say there is an actual Easter egg on the car. The license plate is G R N W one D, which is Grunwald. So that's another Easter egg for Mark Grunwald. They have had a bunch of those in the show, which is very cool. Uh, next one. This is jumping back to kid loki's hideout but there was space mission pinball which is a pinball game from 1976 was not imaginary or anything so i'm not quite sure it was in there other than it looks cool and that's it another one i could not find this on second look but i swear dorothy's house from withers of oz was somewhere in the void like i saw it stuck in the ground at one point Whoa. coming out that seemed uh, probable to me one that definitely was there though the uss eldridge yeah real ship an actual ship that fought in world war ii but it was part of this whole again urban legend thing where people claim that it was turned invisible as part of the philadelphia experiment obviously it wasn't but that's what they were riffing off of here another one that's very deep dive and may or may not be accurate but there's a marquee a movie theater marquee that's seen in the background at one point and the title of the movie is oswald and the martian there's no movie called Oswald and the Martian, but there is a movie, a 1930 animated short called Mars that stars Oswald the Rabbit, who is the proto Mickey Mouse that Walt Disney created. Oh, so I do oh think that's like God. an alternate universe shout out that to there. Deep, dude. Very deep. But then there's a bunch of actual Marvel Universe Easter eggs in there as well. Uh, Ronin's ship from Guardians of the Galaxy, yeah. the Dark Aster is crashed there. Uh, also, uh, there's a helicarrier that's crashed you can see that pretty clearly when Eliath attacks there's a big 
enormous yellow jacket helmet yellow jacket being the villain from the first ant-man he disappeared into the quantum realm so yeah. maybe it's the actual yellow jacket and he got his head cut off i don't know wow. could have happened also it looks like there's the head of a living tribunal statue that's one of the godlike beings in the marvel comic book universe that i, I don't think has shown up in the MCU yet. Maybe it was in the Guardians of the Galaxy, but I'm not 100% sure. Also, another little one before I get to the really big one. Uh, Roxy Wine, an exceptional Pinot Noir. That was very fun and tied into the whole rocks cart and rocks on thing yeah. that they've been running yeah. throughout here. Uh, but the big one, right at the beginning when they're zooming through the wrecked New York City, right at the beginning before we check back in with our Loki, we see Stark Tower but it doesn't say Stark Tower on it. It says Q-E-N-G or Kang. And in the comic books, Kang is a company that takes over Stark Tower. And of course, it is actually owned not by a guy named Kang, but a guy named Kang, who is the time traveling villain Kang. So let's talk about this. This was all a long lead up to get into the thing that we need to talk about here, which is at the end of the episode, Sylvie and Loki break open Eliath, come through, and they see some sort of building at the end of time. Somebody is there. We don't know exactly who it is. There is, I've seen speculation online that it was Dr. Doom's castle, which seems uh -huh. crazy to me. I mean, yeah. they're not going to suddenly bring in Dr. Doom for no reason at the end here. But I know. I'll tell you what, and I, I want to hear your take because I've been monologuing for a while here, Pete, but I still feel like the ultimate person behind the TVA, just given the show, has to be a Loki. Like, I feel like that's what we have to head towards. That's the only thing that makes any sort of logical sense to me and plot sense to me. But if Kang is the wizard behind the curtain here, you know, the humbug that is running everything... I'm starting to waver a little bit on like they maybe they have set up enough visual cues for that actually to be there. And honestly, the Kang Tower thing was the thing that started to push me over the edge a little yeah, bit. But that, sure. but what do you think? Who are we heading towards? Who is actually behind the TVA? Uh, I think it's uh, Miss Minutes. I think it's mm. super clear. It's uh, her run in the show. So uh, uh, I. Uh, that's that's who I feel it is, but yeah, I can understand why people uh, want the Kang and are Kang crazy. So uh, you know that would make sense, but it also could be a Loki very easily. Mm -hmm. And uh, with all the Lokis, you know, why wouldn't it be another Loki? But um, yeah, yeah, it would be crazy if it was a, a jet ski. You know what I mean? So, oh, a sentient jet ski or a jet ski yeah. Loki? Yeah, yeah that yeah, would be very cool. Awesome Loki jet ski. <laughs> I'll tell you what, this is very much a side theory, but it was a thing that piqued my interest a bit. Uh, Miss Minutes, to your point, there could be something going on there potentially, but I was far more interested in what Ravona was doing and how that tied into what Miss Minutes doing. Because after she gives Miss Minutes the assignment to find out everything about the TVA, there's a smirk that Guga Babatha Ra has as she's closing her temp pad that indicated something like she clearly is a huge liar. She's been lying all the time. She lies to Sylvie in a big way in this yeah, episode. You think she's a Loki? Maybe she's a Loki. Maybe there's something because else going on with her playing. It's clear in the last episode, she's playing Owen Wilson. Mm -hmm. The fact that I was, if she would have killed the guard, I feel like that would have been like a real key that she's um, versus a low key. Uh, that she's, uh, you know, that she's behind things. But, like, I don't know. There's so many twists and turns here. It's it's awesome to kind of, like, who, what is going to be. You know, this kind of uh, reveal is really going to be interesting. And I'm so happy it wasn't just three magical lizards. <laughs> like, yeah, that made me very, very happy in the last episode where we decapitated the, uh, you know, the evil kind of... Uh, Disney, uh, you know, kind of uh, animatronic kind of thing there, which is. Yeah, I do. Again, you know, we're going to see it a week. We're going to find out in a week exactly who is behind this. I do like positioning it as the TVA is kind of the big bad here, which seems pretty obvious, but we didn't necessarily speculate that way. You know, I think people are looking for a Kang or a Dr. Doom or some sort of 
figure that is behind all of this, but ultimately it's just the bureaucracy of the TVA limiting the timeline and pruning these Lokis. That is the real problem here. Um, I don't know. I'll just very quickly lay out my arguments for both Kang and a Loki being the person behind the TVA. The Loki to me makes sense because everything is about Loki. The entire show is about Loki. It's always Lokis. It's Lokis all the way down. And like I've talked about here before on the podcast, I think if somebody is going to be specifically trying to eliminate Lokis from the timeline, it makes sense to me that it has to be a Loki. You know? Like, that's that's sort of the only thing that makes logical sense. And certainly to have Loki and Sylvie go up against a Loki at the end makes a lot of sense to me as well. The Kang thing, the only reason beyond just the, the little hints and clues that they put in there with the Kang Tower, with Elioth connection, Ravona's connection. They're also talking about time traveling, which is in this wheelhouse. Yeah, of course. And we talked about this the last episode, but the space lizards look like Kang. You know, the, the timekeepers are, they look like that in the comics, but also they're purple and green, just like Kang. They look like Kang. The argument against it is they haven't said the word Kang at any point in the show, but the thing that made me sort of wonder a little bit beyond all the stuff in this episode is the fact that they really have introduced a new challenge for Loki and Sylvie, or at least for Loki, in every episode so far. They didn't mention Eliath before, but that was the big cloud that they needed to fight this episode. So they could potentially introduce Kang next episode, and it wouldn't be exactly out of nowhere, and it would still frame that episode as this them versus Kang. So that's the thing that kind of like pushes me there. I want to throw out one other wild theory to you. Okay. What if it's Freya? What if it is Loki's mother? Because that's something that we haven't really dealt with. What? I know. What? Yet in the series is so, what if it's a variant of Freya that is doing something to eliminate Loki's from the timeline or keeping Loki on the right path? That would that would be in, just insane. That's just that's I mean, I can't even. Well, I'll throw out two little things that I found out recently that kind of pushed me towards Freya might be important, more important than I think we're giving credit, though obviously she's a very important part of the first episode and Loki's motivation in general, is that I interviewed Natalie Holt, the composer for the show, and she mentioned two things that piqued my interest a little bit. One of them, I asked her about the different themes for Loki and Sylvie, and I asked how much Sylvie's theme fed out of Loki's theme. And she said, well, actually, Sylvie's theme kind of feeds out of Freya's theme a little bit, which I thought was kind of weird and interesting and Wait, seemed so to imply. you pressed the composer for, like, little nuggets of information. Well, we were talking about that. She brought it up. She she mentioned this, and I thought that was kind of fascinating. Made me very briefly in the middle of the night last night when I was just sort of waiting for Loki to be up. Uh, made me think, <laughs> what if... Sylvie you is woke actually up in off... the middle of the night and you were like, it's Freya. It's I be Freya. legitimately was uh, staring at the ceiling, wondering if Sylvie is a Freya variant and not a Loki variant at all. And that made me very nervous going into this episode that they were going to kiss because gross. Yeah. Then he's making out with his... The other thing gross. that she mentioned, though, was that she composed the theme for episode six first and then worked backwards. And she said, the reason will become immediately clear why she did that when we see episode six. Oh, my God. Which started to make me think, all right, there is going to be some sort of reveal there. There's going to be some sort of character. How is this going to make sense? And I don't know. I can't put all the clues together in my head. We'll wow. see. Wow. Any other moments well, in the episode? I'm glad oh, this yeah, is go ahead. torturing you a little bit. That makes me happy. Driving me insane. I'm going crazy. Yeah. All right, yeah, there's a ton of stuff I want to talk yeah, about please. we haven't gotten into. Okay, so first off, epic opening shot. Just just epic. A lot of fun, like, tracking shots in this episode, which was great. A lot of cool stuff. Uh, the I opening also... shot was really good. Just that turning around, turning, twisting was then, so yeah. uncomfortable to watch. Yeah, it was. It was. Um it was kind of reminded me of uh, what's Justin's show that uh, Twin Peaks. It kind of was mm -hmm. Twin Peaks esque. Um, but then I also love when we first meet the kind of uh, 
other Lokis, the fun kind of just talking, like, what's going on with it? And they answer right away because it's they're all Lokis, like, just so much fun. Um, yeah, I also really loved his, like, uh, you know, I thought it'd be more weirded out by the uh, a Loki alligator, like, he's not disheartened by it. That was fun. And then the alligator biting off a Loki arm was just great use of an alligator throughout the whole episode. Like, I really thought the alligator Loki was the real winner after all this. Mm-hmm. And the, Maybe they'll follow alligator Loki in season two. I hope so. Alligator hope Loki it, versus frog. frog Thor. Yes. Yes. Oh, Give the people yeah. what they want. Give the people what they want. And then the fun, crazy, like just throw away line where it's like, why is this kid the king? Oh, I killed Thor. What? Oh, like that was just unbelievable. Yeah. Um, the yeah and also like the miss universe like or m- m- miss minutes being like stalling listen she's a beautiful clock she beautiful could win clock miss universe if she really wanted to <laughs> yeah there's no question um the her stalling to like trap uh sylvie is just it, that was like so creepy in all the right ways um and yeah i really love the loki speech about like how like Sylvie's great and he's changed and we can do this. Like, um, Oh, and then the him and Owen Wilson hug at the end was just so touching. Like, really just, got me. I yeah. was so surprised, and, like, but I love fa- that. And I loved Owen, uh, Mobius saying to Sylvie, you're my favorite. It yeah. was very oh, fun. Very sweet. Yes. Really unbelievable. And then like, I was couldn't believe like they were running towards each other and they both kind of stopped and it was like, Oh, Hey. And I was like, Oh my God, this is so awkward. Like hug, kiss, do something. But then like, we kind of got that blanket moment, which was just awkward in all the right ways. Oh. And then even in the pizza car, like when they're running for their lives, Oh, first off, when Sylvie shows up and then you see the pizza car, like coming to save like that kind of like tension and like, holy crap moment was just so well done and so believable. Didn't feel like we were on a stand stage, like really felt epic. And then the kind of reveal when she's like you, and then kind of this talk of like, I thought I was on the right side. And she's like, oh yeah, annihilating whole, uh, you know, uh, existences and orphaning children, classic hero stuff. Like, oh, just so fun that they kind of got to have that moment in the car. Um, yeah, ah, just really so. And those cute little weird blue birds, I thought they yeah. would be the key to something that was very kind of interesting, uh, that they kept showing them so much. Yeah. At first I thought there were peacocks running around, but they were not no. peacocks. No, they were kind of like headless, but they had these little balls mm-hmm. that were kind of like their head. So it was very interesting. Uh, but yeah, and then the classic Loki, like creating Asgard at the end and like going out like a champ with the uh, just the fucking just glorious purpose line. Like, yeah, man, you know, give your life some purpose. That mm-hmm. was just that was just this is really moving, powerful stuff and having characters like really grasp at what they're doing and why they're doing it. It's, this is so and with this epic backdrop. This is, I'm just having such a blast. I completely agree with you on Richard E. Grad's performance, particularly his cackling, his very <laughs> old school cackling as he yeah. goes out as Eliath takes him down, I thought was wonderful. And something we talked about on the podcast a lot is the possibility of young Avengers coming down the road. But it feels like Kid Loki still being alive in some form at the end of the episode potentially tees up another member of the young Avengers or potentially an antagonist for the young Avengers since he seems he, I mean, he killed Thor. He's a badass. So yeah. uh, we'll see what uh, happens there. Yeah. I was, yeah. I mean, I was really impressed with how great all the characters were in their own kind of separate way. And uh, you're here is kid Loki who killed Thor, but you're still like, Hey, kid Loki is cool. Like this is yeah. fun. He's great. Jack Veal was real good in the part, and I hope we do get to see him more. Before we wrap up here, let's go to the vision board. We've certainly talked about a lot of what we think might happen, but what do we want to see in the final episode of the season? Pete? I Yeah, I want to see Loki actually 
back it all up and not betray uh, Sylvie. And uh, I want them to be together as long as it's not a creepy reveal that they're related or some kind of creepy. I, you know what I mean? Like if we can get that they're separate things that uh, can, uh, you know, have some love as love action, that'd be great. I want to see my Loki theory come true. Uh, there's going to be a part of me that's going to be bubbed a little bit if it's Kang or if it's somebody else or it's somebody we haven't met or heard of in any way before. Um, it has to be because the composer had to do a whole new thing. So, you know, that just shoots uh, your whole thing right there. I don't know, man. I don't know. That's what I want to see. That's on my vision board. the right? composer was playing you. That's what I think. <laughs> oh, Playing me like the instruments she uses to compose things on. Yeah. God damn it, I should have seen that. <laughs> oh, so frustrating. Thanks, Pete. You really opened my eyes to that one. Yeah. Folks, if you want to support our podcast, patreon.com slash comic book club. Also, we do a live show every Tuesday night at 7 p.m. to Crowdcast on YouTube. Come hang out. We would love to speculate about Loki with sure you. Would. iTunes, Android, Spotify, Stitcher, or the app of your choice to subscribe and listen to the show at Marvel Vision Pond on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Uh, I was also thinking at the same time, I just wanted to do a little plug. We're going to have our Black Widow review is going to come out Thursday night, timing with the theatrical release in the Marvel Vision feed. So check that out. You're getting two episodes this week. If you're listening Ooh. later on, hundreds of years from now, that timing doesn't matter to you. Comicbookclublive.com for this podcast and many more. Until next time, stay marvelous. Take care.